Thank you, Mr. President, and I want to thank Senators Murray and Mikulski for gathering us here today and all of my colleagues who are here. I'm proud to be able to join them. Tomorrow, we're expected to be voting on House proposals to defund Planned Parenthood and the Affordable Care Act. These resolutions have been offered not because anyone argues that they create jobs or improve health care, but because House Republicans were willing to shut down the federal government if they did not receive a vote on Planned Parenthood and health care. So that's right. Even though shutting down the government would have meant furloughing 800,000 people, including members of the military, they were willing to shut down the government. This kind of a threat, especially in a recession, is irresponsible. Planned Parenthood is a critical provider of women's health care, especially to low-income individuals. 1.4 million Medicaid patients around the country, mostly women, but not all women, depend on Planned Parenthood as their main source of primary and preventive health care. They depend on Planned Parenthood for contraceptives, for screenings for sexually transmitted diseases, and for screenings for breast and cervical cancer. In some parts of my home state of New Hampshire, Planned Parenthood is the only provider of preventing ser preventive services for low-income women. It serves almost 16,000 patients annually. In a time of economic hardship, we should not be taking steps to reduce access to health care. And let's be clear, this vote has nothing to do with abortion. By law, Planned Parenthood cannot, that is, cannot, use federal funds for abortions. Moreover, Planned Parenthood provides family planning services that greatly reduce the occurrence of unplanned pregnancies. It's ironic that many of the most ardent opponents of abortion are the very people who want to shut down the family planning services that prevent unplanned pregnancies. So this vote is not also not about deficit reduction. Despite what some of members of the Senate have claimed, 97 percent of the reproductive health services provided by Planned Parenthood in New Hampshire and throughout most of the country, are preventive care. Over 90 percent are for preventive care. And as we all know, preventive health care lowers health care costs and it saves lives. Detecting cancer early through regular screenings greatly increases a patient's quality of life and her chances of survival. And in the long run, it's vastly cheaper for patients in the health care system and the federal government for diseases to be prevented or treated early. One of my constituents from Rochester, a mother of two, told me about her oldest daughter who works for a small restaurant. Her daughter can't afford health insurance, and it's not provided through where she works. So for her regular checkups and preventive care, she relies on Planned Parenthood. Now, because of a history of cervical cancer in her family, her daughter was regularly screened. And it was Planned Parenthood that first diagnosed her daughter with cervical cancer. And because of that early diagnosis, her daughter was able to obtain successful, life-saving treatment. There are countless of stories, countless stories like this. We heard some of them on the floor this afternoon. Mr. President, I also want to address the other House proposal that we've been talking about this afternoon. It's a proposal that would also hurt women's health care, and that's the pending resolution to deny funding for health care reform. Already, the Affordable Care Act is working for women across the country. As of last year, it's illegal for insurance companies to require women to obtain pre-authorizations or referrals to access OBGYN care. But there's a lot of work that still has to be done. Currently, women in the individual health care market pay up to 48 percent more in premiums than men. And beginning in 2014, this kind of discrimination, because of the new health care law, 
will be outlawed. Issuers will be banned from issuing discriminatory gender ratings to charge women and small businesses with predominantly female workforces more for the same coverage. In the same year, 2014, health care reform also makes it illegal for insurers to deny health care coverage on the basis of pre-existing conditions, designations which have often been used to discriminate against women. Many women across the country today are denied coverage for pre-existing conditions such as breast or cervical cancer, having had a C-section, or even just being pregnant. Some women have even been denied coverage for having sought out medical care for domestic or sexual violence. It's critical that we ensure low-income women have access to health care in these difficult times, and that we ensure that all women have access to health care. So I urge my colleagues to vote against these two provisions tomorrow, these ideological attacks on women's health care. Let's get back to the business of creating jobs and dealing with this country's debt and deficit. Thank you very much, Mr. President.